bought this uh, long tractor about a dozen years ago. It's the uh, smallest model that Husqvarna makes. It's a small yard. It's kind of uh, in between uh, too big to uh, use a push mower and too small to use a riding mower. But I bought it mostly because I wanted to have the grass catcher. And that was uh, a problem. I think it's a combination of this being uh, the smallest uh, tractor and this uh, attachment. Uh, it's not powerful enough. There was not enough lift, not enough vacuum. And unless conditions were perfect, this shoe would plug up. And I put up with that maybe for a season or so, and then I did a modification. Originally, it only had that one blade with that scar pattern. I added a second blade at 90 degrees to it and welded it. And there's two of these underneath there. Okay, so now there's a lot of lift, all right? And uh, problem solved. And the uh, additional benefit is that I've been looking for a multi-blade rotor to uh, do some further testing on the uh, soft bearing balancer gadgets number 58. So we got one. The blades have been cleaned and sharpened, uh, painted black on the back for contrast, small piece of uh, white duct tape on the back side, and a small piece of indicator tape for the protractor on the front side. This video will assume that you've watched gadgets number 58. So I'm going to be a lot more direct in the interpretation of the waveform and the application of the corrections. First run. Okay, let's have a look at this. 720 degrees anchored. the cursor down here, bottom of the trough, about 13 mils at 203 degrees. Index the rotor, very systematic this thing, 203 degrees. It says to remove weight here. We'll take a little bit off these two. So we're at 7 mils at 218 degrees. 218, so a little bit off of these again. All right, we'll do it. So far, um, it's always shown me that I need to remove from those two places. I never went too far with the grinder and uh, removed too much. Um, let's have another spin here. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera when it slows down and the pendulum is going through uh, its natural frequency through that transition phase. It shakes when it does that. That's uh, very normal. That 
that's what you expect out of a salt bearing balancer. Gotta be getting close here. Let's have a look. Uh, anchor over here and there. Move over here. Anchor. So, like uh, under two mils, right? One point six. So I'm gonna call this thing balanced. There's a few pointers uh, that I find quite impressive here that I'd like to share with you. Okay. Uh, one of the things is that once we get to that level, you know, two mils and below, uh, the underlying uh, voltage that the uh, oscilloscope is working at, and we're using AC coupling on this, is uh, peak to peak, like 10 to 20 millivolts. All right. So this $65 Loto OSC 482, a real budget oscilloscope, is able to work very well when you get down to 10 to 20 millivolts. Uh, that's impressive. If this little soft bearing balancer can do this four bladed uh, rotor, it can do three bladed and four bladed uh, boat propellers. There's another aspect to this. Uh, this could be scaled up. If you made a more rigid frame, larger, a longer pendulum, using the very same sensors and the same method, you should be able to balance uh, tires. You should be able to do industrial and agricultural rotors. Altogether, the uh, oscilloscope and the sensors is about a hundred bucks, you know, excluding the smartphone. Compare that to dynamic balancing machines that will run into tens of thousands. And in the case of the equipment that I was working with in uh, my professional career, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you're getting access to the technology for a hundred bucks. And that is uh, in line with uh, the message in the gadgets playlist, always allowing us as do-it-yourselfers to have access to some very high-end technology at rock bottom cost. So subscribe, like, and catch you guys.